Hello everyone and welcome to Stock System Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present an SSTD, a single stage to Duna space plane. This was actually originally supposed to be a single stage to Minmus, but it actually takes more to land on Minmus than it necessarily takes to land on Duna, because with Duna you can aerobrake. Uh, so all it needs is the transfer amount, which is about 1,050 to uh, 1,100 meters per second from low Kerman orbit. Whereas to Minmus, you have to transfer with like 900, get into orbit with maybe less than 200, and then landing takes maybe 200, 300. So it takes more to land on Minmus. But the goal of this is mainly to, when you get there, and not to refuel along the way, when you get there, use the Convertitron here, and you see the ore tanks there, and we have a drilling unit tucked away here that if we use this hinge can rotate down, and so we can drill for ore to refuel ourselves. That's the idea. So that, that whole system we'll have to check out some other time. First of all, we need to get somewhere. The goal is to get somewhere that we can drill for ore and that could be Minmus, but it seems like Duna might be easier, which is weird, but it, it's true. So maybe we can get to Duna. I've gotten this to Minmus orbit during a live stream already, so we've already done that, but I have not tried to get to Duna. And so we will see, will error breaking work? I don't know. Will it actually be able to get to Duna? because maybe if you just fly it a little bit wrong, it's not going to work out, so we'll find out. But the rules for this are, of course, we don't want a flying carpet method, by, by which I mean using the external command seats on like a plank or something. I know people do that. Yes, you can make a single stage to Duna easily with uh, command seats, and I know. Okay, that's not, that's not interesting to me. So yes, yes, I'm aware of such things. No, it, it, we had to have a cockpit. I even insisted on a docking port, and in this case the Mark II Clampatron instead of just putting a docking port on top, which would have been easier, of course. And so there's that. We've got the radiators. We've got RCS ports so that we can eventually dock with something, of course. Uh, we do not have the mod propellant, though. I left that unfueled for now since we're going directly to Duna. We presumably, if we could actually land there, we would just refuel the mod propellant in C2. And here we have a fuel cell array for extra charge so that we can run the Convertron and the drill. It's, I originally made the plane around the big Convertron unit because mm, I'm not sure we're going to get enough ore and be able to uh, get enough fuel like this. It's a little bit slow, so we'll see. You'll note the little terrier here. Well, that's to help us get places, because the rapiers aren't very efficient. It's a little bit sad, but it's true. You, you may also note the vertical landing engines, the cubs here. I haven't actually tried out vertical landing with this, but that is an option. Shouldn't be necessary at Duna, because it does have an atmosphere. I don't know how well this is going to glide, but it's got a big surface, technically. So we'll see. I mean, it gets off the ground with full tanks. By the time it gets there, it'll have empty tanks. So will it be good enough in Duna's thin atmosphere? Let's find out. So this is the stock system, and I do have just stock parts here. But we do have visual mods, as you can see. And well, that's pretty nice. The moon is uh, just going out of eclipse there. Pretty quickly, too. Really bouncy landing gear. Um, technically in this install we do have KAS and KIS, but I'm not using them here. So, but those would be option. This is really crazy. Okay, well, uh, alright, alright, let's just go. You might have noticed the name in the SPH was Flan 3. Uh, Flan was uh, suggested by a viewer 3 because, well, we had, we went through a few versions, so. That's just how it was. 
I don't know if the scatterer and all this is... The, the cloud layer definitely does not look right. Does it? Hmm. There's something weird going on here. There's the astronomer's visual pack, by the way. We tucked in the drilling units and used those rotation devices, rotatrons, the rotation servos, uh, because of drag, hoping that we could reduce drag by doing that. Not sure. Again, what I really wanted was something that could land on Minmus, but trying to eke out another two, three hundred meters per second out of this may not be possible. I mean, if I want all the functionality that I intended here. I think it may be difficult to get there. Yeah, something weird is going on with the atmosphere. Maybe it's the eclipse. I blame the eclipse. It's clearly doing something weird. Does it produce that? Yeah, it produces this dark spot for the eclipse, and I think that's actually messing up Scatterer <laughs> locally. Don't launch during an eclipse, I guess, is the message. Okay, and around 13 kilometers, we pitch down to break the speed of sound and get the rapiers doing their high thrust thing. So we do lose some altitude. We don't need to lose a whole lot, though. I think that should do the trick. We can continue going up now. We are still being eclipsed. Now is a good time to get the orbit information out. Parity between liquid fuel and oxidizers is around 2360 liquid fuel. So we want to get to that before we go into rocket mode. More or less. Sort of leveling out at uh, or near 18 kilometers here. And we want to get to 1500 meters per second. Oh, uh, it's tough to control it there. Okay. Add to remove the forward solar panels. There were solar panels further in front, but they tended to blow up as we got to 1500 meters per second. We want to probably stay below 20 kilometers until we reach our preferred speed here. Oh, 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 I saw some heating there, so we'll go up to avoid that, whatever that is blowing up. Trying to be cautious about the heating. Whatever that is, I don't want it to overheat. It keeps trying to. We're past 1500. Okay, I'm gonna let it sneak up. Oh, sneak up, sneak up. So that we can burn off a little bit more liquid fuel. Even though we're losing speed, as long as we're going up, it's fine. Okay, switching to rocket mode and engaging the Terrier. And pulling up slightly. Don't want to create a whole lot of drag, but we do need to get to space and everything. Make sure a terrier is doing its thing. Yep. Pitching up is important, otherwise we'll overheat the cockpit and everything. Okay, rapier's off at 70 kilometers. Once our apoapsis hits 70 kilometers, that's all we need from the rapiers. And we don't need to pitch up anymore. Not too much, anyway. The terrier is tilted, so we do need to pitch up a little bit. And to get a sense of the terrier's delta V, let's switch this around. Well, it's, it was telling the truth to begin with. 1500 meters per second there. Well, this is a long burn now. <laughs> no avoiding that. Uh, we've got two and a half minutes to apoapsis still. 
we can keep our orbit fairly low in order to make the transfer later. We don't have to go to like 100 to by 100 or anything. So just point at prograde. Hardly increasing orbital velocity, but again, we have time. The Terrier isn't pointed perfectly through, but it's good enough. It takes about a quarter of the pitch authority. Well, 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 okay, maybe physical time warp is optimistic here. Okay, uh, let's wait a little bit. Little streaks and flashes you see on the ground are, I think, lightning storms. Not necessarily my favorite feature on the visual pack. Well, transfer-wise, it's going to be tight. Okay, well, that's orbit. We've got 1089, it says. Can we make that transfer? Of course, I already time warped to the window. It's possible I still have just a bit too much liquid fuel. Didn't quite get to that parity number I was looking for. Okay, we have an encounter. 1,044. We're certainly not going to have a whole lot to spare when we get there. Oh, we'll try to do a mid-course adjustment, maybe. I don't want to approach very fast. How much will a mid-course adjustment take, though? Nope, not a lot. I don't know if there's anything we can do with Ike, but 6.6 .6 there. So if we manage these really well, that'd be great. But then this terrier sort of pointed awkwardly, so we'll see about that. Oh, it says start burn in a minute and 40 seconds. Burn time is long, though. We've got 8 minutes and 27 seconds of burn time there. It says 8 minutes and 8 seconds. It's probably right about that. Hmm. It might be better to do this in two burns, but that does mean our existing plot is irrelevant. Definitely the mid-course adjustment is. So we'll have to get rid of that, and we'll do this in two bits and see if we can manage that properly. So we're going to pass this burn time. And we'll start when it's 15 degrees from prograde. Okay. Okay, we're getting close to 15 degrees above prograde. I'll stop it there and I'll replot. Looking for 787 meters per second or so, hopefully. Well, that doesn't quite get us there. Okay, well, that would leave us about 34 meters per second. Nope, that's the wrong line. That's the right line. And then... Well, something like that will be fine. Um, that's another 6.8. Alright, so we still have it. It's tight, though. No... It's definitely not 15 de degrees away from prograde. It's more than that. For now, we might as well get some sunlight. Okay, time to go. No, oh, I don't know. I don't like how this number is comparing to that number now. Hmm. We only need six meters per second for the mid-course adjustment, but. On balance, it's not working out very well. Okay, we have an escape trajectory there. As plotted, we don't have enough for the mid-course adjustment, but we'll see. Yeah, we don't. Up. Oh. Uh. Well, we have a Duna encounter. But we don't... That's not what we wanted. We have 69 liquid fuel extra. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to revert. 
and we're gonna dump maybe 40 units of liquid fuel and see if we can make this work out better. Okay, I time warped through the clips so that hopefully the scenery would be a little bit better this time. Throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Gotta like its spirit. So if, again, we did uh, reduce how much liquid fuel was in this tank in particular. It was already not fully fueled, that particular tank. Uh, did that a little bit more. Okay, gear up. Well, okay, that one was not as good as the first one, and it won't be enough to get us to where we need to go. So, let me just cut it right there, revert, and we'll try again. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more go. I will be linking the craft file in the video description so that if I fail, it will become a challenge for you to succeed. It is theoretically possible to get this to Duna. I don't know what happens in Duna's atmosphere when you do. Maybe I'll find out this time, maybe I won't. We'll see. I put some of the fuel back in. We'll just uh, keep it at air-breathing altitudes as long as we can to work off the extra if we have extra. I'm trying to use even less fuel on ascent this time. Okay. Accelerating. Okay, this time we need to do a better job of staying at like 18 kilometers in order to get to 1500 meters per second. Otherwise we are not gonna end up with the delta V we need. Okay, 18 kilometers, trying to slow our ascent right now. And we're watching for overheating. We also definitely don't want to go down because downward momentum can be sort of a trap here. Okay, overheating warnings. We'll just let it climb now. We didn't, still didn't quite get to the speed I wanted to. Okay, switching. Let's not pitch up so much. Okay. Rapier is off. Maybe this is better. We're still facing a lot of atmospheric drag, but... Also, maybe lift? Okay, I think we're looking better this time. Okay, let me just coast a bit. We'll keep it at 85 kilometers there. Okay, we're at 85 by 80 and nearly 1200 meters per second this time, so much better situation. And so, yeah, flying it properly certainly helps. And let me see about the imbalance between liquid fuel and oxidizer. It seems like we have 20 extra units of oxidizer. Again, we'll be trying to go in two rounds rather than just one. Okay, there's an encounter. Perhaps I shouldn't uh, try and refine. Well, that's pretty good already. Okay, so node. 
And again, maybe this time I'll go for 20 degrees instead of 15 degrees. We were so far off on the second burn. Okay, starting. Okay, that'll be the first burn. 7.22 left to do. According to that, when we replot, it won't be 7.22, but hopefully it'll be close. Looks like 7.27. Okay, getting ready here. And burn. Okay, we are on escape. Let's keep an eye out. Looks like we'll have 100 meters per second after the burn. That is good. But we're sort of off to the side here. That's probably because of the way the terrier is tilted. Well, I'm not getting an encounter here. Yeah, I think we overburned somehow. Okay, so let's do this minor correction here. Okay, and then make course adjustment. Well, that would certainly get us into the atmosphere, wouldn't it? I have no idea how deep into the atmosphere we should go. Well, that's a little bit touchy. Let's go with that for now. So, in 76 days we'll do that. So panels are facing the sun. Okay. On we go. Here we go. Now the tilt of the terrier causing us minor issues. We're going on this side of Duna instead of the other side. I guess it doesn't really matter if we have an inclination or not. Okay. Might be even better if we do. So we'll adjust out. We want to capture and descend to the surface. We definitely don't want to crash into anything really, really fast, though. It's tough to tell exactly where that's going to happen, right? 16 kilometers, maybe? We'll see. Let's get over there. Okay. Jeb has reported that we entered Duna SOI. I think that's what Jeb was saying. 15, no, we'll go with 16 kilometers. We'll see how it goes. All right. Well, we can see Duna there. Um, well, we're sort of recharging. Okay. Okay, so we will like maximal drag. That's probably the best camera there. All right. Well, that means basically we want all of our bottom side facing the air, such as it is. I don't know if getting the air brakes out will help anything. Not yet, probably. Uh, no, we don't want to flip around. We don't want to flip around. It is flipping around. Oh, great. That's not really... Our solar panels are probably going to explode. This isn't very good for flying. Maybe I should just point it directly at prograde instead. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to have trouble when it comes down to trying to actually land this, because we sure don't have enough to use the VTOL engines. 
I don't know if they have enough thrust to weight ratio with it. They might with it being out of fuel and everything. Oh, this prograde. Uh, can we get there? Um, close? No? Okay, back to retrograde. Back to prograde. Don't go too prograde, otherwise we're not going to slow down, but we want to go prograde. It's complicated. Okay, okay. I mean, we should, uh, we should still have center of mass in front of center of lift and everything. But it's going all over the place right now. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> How are we going to manage this? Uh, our liquid fuel is probably evenly distributed everywhere. Well, at least it's giving us some time to work with. Well, this is still not prograde. Um, we certainly have stalled out. Uh, guess I might as well get the landing gear down. We're falling like a rock kind of thing. Maybe I should put parachutes. Um, guess we can ready those thrusters. I just want to point prograde. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, that's a little bit too late though. Uh, okay. No. Oh. Oh, not quite in one piece. Not quite in one piece. Still technically a single stage to do now, though. Let us demonstrate. I didn't put a ladder either. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, single stage to somewhere doesn't say that it can get back, right? Doesn't say anything about that. Uh, okay, plant a flag. Okay, SST the landing site. Well, it was a single stage while it lasted. All right. So with that, here on Duna, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you happen to be able to use this graph file to actually land on Duna safely, uh, or you make a modification that helps you out, uh, please tell me in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.